Hi, I'm Tony Brooks, director of Wilkes-Barre Preservation Society, curator of the Zebulon Butler House Museum, and welcome to episode three of Diamond City, A Trail of History. I hope you enjoyed episode one and two and get a chance to go to YouTube and watch them because we really like making these videos for you. Today we're gonna to talk about Zebulon Butler, his son, Lord Butler, his grandson, John Lord Butler, and his great-granddaughter, Sarah Butler Woodward. Four generations of the Butler family that lived here in the Zebulon Butler house. We're gonna talk about the rooms, the family, some of the things that they did to build the community in Wilkes-Barre and the Wyoming Valley. But first, I wanna talk about how the Wilkes-Barre Preservation Society came to acquire this house. The story in itself is a great story for community activism, for people being involved in their neighborhood, and to empower a group of people to take on a project in their neighborhood to make it better. About two years ago, in the building right next door, a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, Tony, there's demolition crews that are outside the Zebulon Butler house put us all into a moment of panic because we knew that this was the oldest house of Wilkes-Barre and a house that definitely needed to be preserved. We quickly mobilized three groups of people, the Downtown Residents Association, members of the Wilkes-Barre Preservation Society, and the Shawnee Fort chapter of the Daughters of American Revolution, who literally watched the house day and night while I try to contact the owner. Well, I did over a weekend where I described and said to the owner, please don't knock down the oldest house in Wilkes-Barre. And he said, hey, buy it from me. I said, what do you want for it? Well, within a weekend, we went around to the neighborhood in downtown Wilkes-Barre and raised basically $16,000 from 16 people. One of our donors was exceedingly generous and we gathered all the money to pay for the house, pay the back taxes and the closing costs. And now it's ours free and clear for a mortgage. It's a great story how the Downtown Residents Association, the DAR, and the members of the Preservation Society worked together to have a great historical preservation positive success story for Wilkes-Barre. So we're going to talk about what we want to do for this house at the end, but right now we want to introduce you to Zebulon Butler and Lord Butler and show you the great room inside the Zebulon Butler homestead. Come in with me. Follow me. In 1845, the Wyoming Valley historian Charles Minor said, the life and times of Zebulon Butler is the history of the Wyoming Valley. Who is this Zebulon Butler and why is he so entwined with the history of our area? Well, Zilly Butler has many titles to his name. And one of the very first titles he has is a leader of the Susquehanna Company, the organization from Connecticut, the land company from Connecticut that came to the Wyoming Valley in 1769 to settle the area. Zebulon Butler was chair of the Committee of Settlers. And over time, he becomes the political and military leader for the area. He has a prior military experience before the American Revolution. He serves as an ensign in the French and Indian War. And in 1762, he also serves at the Battle of Havana. Matter of fact, his ship got shipwrecked on the shores of Cuba and his men had to swim to shore and then go off to fighting in the Battle of Havana. After the French and Indian War, the Susquehanna Company got started and 40 settlers came to the Wyoming Valley, followed by another 200 settlers in the five original townships that make up the Wyoming Valley. And they are Plymouth, Hanover, Wilkes-Barre, Kingston, and Pittston. He becomes the town moderator when the area was all collectively known as the Wyoming region. And then later it becomes the Westmoreland County, Connecticut. He's influential in the Yankee Pennamite Wars. He goes off to serve on the Continental Line during the Revolution. But more importantly, he serves as the commanding officer, the founding officer of the 24th Connecticut Regiment, which still exists today as the 109th Field Artillery. Zebulon Butler is leader of the American forces during the Battle of Wyoming. And following the war, 
when the county of Luzerne is created in 1786, this very room, the great room of the Zebulon Buller House, serves as the place for the first meeting for the courts of Luzerne County. Matter of fact, all of Luzerne County business was created, was handled right here in this room up until 1791. Zebulon Butler dies in 1795 at his house at Colebrook, which was in Wilkes-Barre Township, kind of where uh, the Home Depot is today. His son, Lord Butler, born in 1761, takes over the house in 1795, and he becomes the leading citizen of Wilkes-Barre in the Wyoming Valley. Lord Butler becomes so involved in the area that he has 14 political offices to his name, three of which are military. He starts off as a lieutenant in the Light Dragoons of Luzerne County, then becomes the captain of the Light Dragoons. Light Dragoons, by the way, are cavalrymen who dismount their horses. They use the horse for mobility only. They dismount and fight with their hands and sabers uh, uh, with hand-to-hand -hand combat, unlike cavalrymen who will stay on their horses. He becomes the captain of that unit, and gradually over time, he becomes a brigadier general in the Luzerne County Militia. When it comes to politics, he has about 12 different political offices that he held. Probably the most illustrious one, he was a member of the Pennsylvania Supreme Executive Council, an organization that was running the government of Pennsylvania between 1776 and 1790, and there he became an intimate friend of Benjamin Franklin. Back home, he helps organize the borough of Wilkes-Barre and gets elected to be the first town council president. Also goes on to serve as the Burgess of Wilkes-Barre, which today we would call mayor. He serves also as a state senator. He's the first sheriff of Luzerne County, the Register of Wills, the Register of Deeds, becomes the Prothonotary, state senator, and a county commissioner as well. He's got them all covered and he was quite beloved in Wilkes-Barre. His obituary from 1824 was published in a newspaper that was owned by his brother, Steuben Butler, and the obituary reads, died. Suddenly, on Wednesday last at his residence in this borough, Lord Butler Esquire in the 63rd year of his age, though he enjoyed an imperfect state of health for some years past, Yet until the night preceding his death, no symptoms have occurred, calculated to give his family unusual uneasiness. By his death, society has lost one of its most valuable members. The various important offices, civil and military, to which he has been called by the suffrages of his fellow citizens, and which he uniformly filled with honor to himself and usefulness to his community, are sufficient evidences of his integrity and worth. In the different relations of husband, parent, and neighbor, he could have few superiors. And the poor have lost a steady friend. What a wonderful testament to Lord Butler. In this room, Zebulon Butler and Lord Butler ran the government for Luzerne County for very many, many years. And we hope to restore it back to its grandeur of 1810. Behind me on the wall are some gifts from the present day Butler family. John Lord Butler, the last butler to live in the Wyoming Valley, was a dear intimate friend of mine who died about 10 years ago. And he gave me as a gift in the middle of the, of the wall, a portrait of Lord Butler, flanked by two of his children, his son, Pierce Butler, and his wife, Temperance Colt Butler. They're wonderful items that we have that we are growing in this collection to make this a great Zebulon Butler House Museum. And we welcome more items to be donated. Hey, now, now let's go upstairs and see what the bedroom looks like. So we just came upstairs from the living room and now we're in the second floor bedroom. There are three bedrooms on the second floor, but before I talk about the third and fourth generations that lived in this house. I first want to talk about the people who have been so gracious in donating different items for the house. We want to display this house in the federal period, which is architecturally derived from 1790 to the 1830s. And as you can see behind me, we have a rather late 1830 portrait that was donated by descendants of Zebulon Butler from the Tunkhannock area. I'm sitting on a wonderful recreation of a late, 17, late 18th century chair. And we have a perfectly 1810 candle table that was also donated 
to the house as well. So they are some of the things that we're looking for to furnish this house in the federal period. So who were the third and fourth generations that lived in the Butler house. So the third generation is a guy named John Lord Butler. He's born in 1795, the year that his grandfather Zebulon Butler dies, and he dies in 1858. John Lord Butler went into business with his brother, Lord Butler. You'll see these names are going over and over and over again in this family. Lord and Zebulon and George and John are used all the time. So John Lord Butler and his brother Lord Butler go into the coal business. Colonel John Lord Butler was the very first person to create a map of the anthracite area of Wyoming Valley in 1830. And you can see all the coal outcrops up and down the valley. And most important is one in Pittston called the Butler Mine. John Lord Butler and his brother Lord Butler incorporated the Butler Mine in 1835. They capitalized it in 1856. And it was in business for decades and decades, well into the early 20th century. So in a lot of ways, John Lord Butler is really the first ground of entrepreneurs in the anthracite industry that, and a family that starts to make lots of money from coal and bring over thousands and thousands of immigrants, particularly to the Pittston area, where they mined for several, several years. So John Lord Butler has a daughter named Sarah Butler. And Sarah is uh, born in 1833. She lives in this house until she gets married in 1857, just a year before her father dies. She marries Stanley Woodward, who was a very well-known jurist here in Luzerne County. He becomes the president of the court of uh, Luzerne County, the Court of Common Pleas. Sarah inherits this house of the death of her father and moves in with her mother Cornelia to take care with her, of her, and Stanley, her husband, moves in with her. Ten years later, uh, um, they decide to move this house. An extraordinary feat to take a house and move it three blocks south from its present location. And in the former location at Northampton and River Street, they build a fantastic 1868 mansion called the Woodward Mansion that is around Wilkesbury until 1982, when, sad to say, it gets demolished to make way for a dormitory at Wilkes University. Stanley Woodward and Sarah Butler Woodward had two children, John Butler Woodward, who served a judge just as his father did, and the other son, Dr. George Woodward, went off to the University of Pennsylvania Medical School, where he became a real estate developer and developed half of Chestnut Hill. His family is still alive today in Chestnut Hill, and you could still buy a house from George Woodward. Hey, let's go outside and talk about the future plans of the house. So I really hope you liked episode three of Diamond City Trail of History, our show about the Zebulon Butler House and our plans how to restore it. We thank you from the Wilkesbury Preservation Society and I'm sure you want to be involved in our efforts to save historic properties around Wilkesbury, particularly this one. So how can you become involved? Well, you've heard me talk about different items that we need to have donated from the federal period for the Zebulon Butler House. So if you just so happen to have an unwanted portrait, say from 1810, piece of furniture from 1790, or a collection of books from 1825, those kind of items for the house would be greatly appreciated. Obviously, we're also trying to raise money in this time of COVID. We had to cancel our summer event and it looks like we will cancel our October dinner. So we're really relying on donations and memberships. Memberships to the Wilkesbury Preservation Society are $40 a year. You can go to wbpreservation.org and you can join there. While you're there, there's all kinds of merchandise that you can buy. We have a series of tote bags of architectural, uh, significant architectural buildings that sadly were demolished, but we want to bring a highlight to them as well. Inside the house, each one of the rooms has a naming opportunity. So if you want to be so generous to help us restore the great room, the living room on the first floor of the Zebulon Butler house, 
please talk to me. We can figure out something to do about that, and as well as the rooms upstairs. I also want to make sure that I include that the two bedrooms uh, in the back will be used as archive space. We have been amassing a great amount of materials that are related to the Butler family, the four generations that lived here, and the times of those errors as well. So this house will become a house museum. And my ultimate goal for the house is to place it in 1810. Because what I really love, particularly children to experience in the Wyoming Valley, is to see how architecture and interiors change over time. So imagine we go on a road trip where we start at the Denison House and experience 1790. We come to the Zebulon Butler House, experience 1810. Then we can go to the Swetland House, experience 1850s. We can go over to the Stegmeyer Mansions, the Frederick C. 1870, and the Mary Stegmeyer in C. 1910. Five generations, five different styles of architecture, five different interior designs, and you can learn how they change over time. The Wilkes-Barre Preservation Society was founded in 2003 to bring architectural walking tours to downtown Wilkes-Barre and to explain social history. I'm in my 17th year of giving tours. Sad that I can't do one this summer, but hopefully we can maybe do a social distance one uh, in the fall. Really hope you like these videos. This was episode three. Please go back on YouTube and watch episode one about the Stegmeyers and episode two about 14 Revolutionary War veterans that are buried in Hollenbach Cemetery. So we look forward to four, five, and six more episodes. If you have an idea, a suggestion for us, please see the links below for my contact information and please come involved with the Wilkes-Barre Preservation Society. Thank you.